Okay, good morning. This is uh, day six of week 11 of Urban Agoge. Yeah, so I thought I'd put the boom on a longer spread. So ideally, you can uh, see more of this beautiful forest. You're not looking at me so much. Ooh. It's uh So hopefully that's a, a good view. Now we're down by the river again today. So apologies for no video being up yesterday. However, the video was made. It most definitely was. We're on the long boom pole. Yes, so that's being rendered right now. Um, yesterday's video was with my good friend Miles, who I met as a result of doing um, the training and subsequently the weekly show on local radio in South Manchester, which is a great experience. You know, if you've got, especially if you're into a type of music or genres that don't get played on the radio very often, community radio is a very cool thing to be able to do. And it's largely everywhere. And part of their remit is doing training so that you can, within the bounds of regulations, be a radio broadcaster. So if you've ever wanted to be a radio broadcaster, like if you wanted to be most things, then uh, the technology and the support is quite often there. Unless you live in a very rural area, then uh, you might have to come up with another plan. But if you live in an urban area and uh, you want to be a radio presenter and you don't mind not getting paid, generally speaking, someone will always let you do that. So I just moved to Manchester and I was uh, at the time a little bit underemployed I was looking for a job. I was in a local community centre, which is a good place to check out. And uh, there was an advert for trainee radio presenters at the local radio station. It involved doing a couple of days worth of classroom stuff and a bit of effort at home to produce music and a little 15 minute show, which was very nerve wracking. But given that I'd done podcasting, it was all right, but uh, doing it live was a bit, I don't know how it affected people when they were doing it. But uh, one of the things I noticed was that once you've done something like that, definitely I noticed it in myself and others and the other people that were doing it, your self-confidence goes up. So if you're wondering if there's a way you can improve your self-confidence, then yes, go and do community radio. Tricky bit. You know, if you're watching these videos and you wonder why I'm not always looking at the camera, it's because this is terrain you've got to pay attention to. Okay, so yesterday I got hung out with two friends of mine. First one was my friend Andrew, who is essentially the reason I talk about <coughs> and found out about Lenovo laptops, really, in depth. Which is why I go on about them so much, because they're great and the Canon 600D, Magic Lantern. Um, the new phone I bought is down to him. The, uh, you know, a lot of things. If I've got some electronics and it's of a, of a broad brand of electronics, although there's a good reason to own that brand, it's down to Andrew. So first half of the day I hung out with Andrew, went into town and had breakfast and went record shopping not with Andrew, because Andrew had other things to do, and then met back, with, uh, met, met back up with Andrew after I'd done the record shopping. Bought myself a few albums, because um, I like vinyl. And then while I was uh, waiting for Andrew to finish his errands, a random guy came up to me and 
had a whole bunch of pristine albums from his collection that he was selling and I managed to get two more albums um, for a fiver each. So it's like, what, six, seven dollars? Or six, seven euros? So that was interesting. So I don't know if it will be all that uh, interesting to people out there because I know a lot of you don't collect vinyl but I'm into certain types of music and I got uh, a compilation double album by The Jam from 1982 called Snap which is great and it was in lovely condition and uh, there's a guy called Harry Nielsen who was very much around in the 70s very much of the uh, psychedelic movement along with the Beatles and he produced an album called The Point which is all about you know social exclusion and philosophy and stuff but it's a children's album and it's very very good so if you look at the Nielsen's The Point on YouTube you'll find lots of insert tracks and this the version that this guy had was uh, the second release but it was the one with the gatefold and the included comic book um, I may well be doing a channel about unusual vinyl because that's the sort of thing I collect because I like it I get to be a, a, a basically a curator of my own record collection which is interesting because the great thing about collecting vinyl is that you've got I don't know about 80 years worth of music given that they're still making vinyl today to uh, pick from and pick over the bones of civilization. So yeah, so there's that. So that's what I did with the first half of my day and in the second half, um, Miles, my friend from the radio station, and I produced a show with him for a couple of years. And uh, last Sunday, I went back and did another episode of the show, Sonic Sunday. And if you wanted to watch it, or listen to it rather, you can probably go get it on SoundCloud. It's P-S-O-N-I-C, Personic, Per Sunday, which I thought was funny. So yeah, so Miles came over and Miles is uh, one of those people that likes to film live gigs. So yesterday's video, um, I allow, basically put him as the cameraman and uh, so he shot everything, he was mic'd up so you can't hear me all that much, although you can in parts, you know, it's, it's a bit faint so you might have to turn up the volume to hear me, but it was, it's over an hour and it, and it was very hard to edit, so it is a long ramble, it is worth waiting for. If I'd thought ahead and got two laptops set up to do Caden Live and all the stuff, um, then we'd have Caden Live and all the stuff on two laptops. However, that shouldn't be a problem in future because um, of other circumstances that I'm going to talk about now. So today's kind of a housekeeping episode, like a catch up. So, other things. Miles. So we passed, we breezed through the uh, the 1,000 subscribe, the 1,000 view thing. So about 1,100 views. Thank you very, very much. And we're like something like 11,000 minutes of watch time. It runs at about ten, you know 10 minutes per video view. Uh, so yeah. So thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all your input. I'm super impressed that we've got a couple of people out there. And I'd like to hear if you're doing the uh, physical bits of the agogi. Uh, I'd certainly love to see your woodland wanderings. So if you, uh, I think I got the impression that Zoo Echoes, one of our um, one of the long-standing people that watch this that also put in money to my Patreon, which is amazing and allows me to basically explore bits of kit and field test them. So I like to think that you guys are getting a bit of value out of it. 
So, yeah, so he's doing it, and, then, and apparently there may well be some footage, which we'd, I would love to see. And if you want to put it on your own channel and do the editing and stuff like that and get it, you know, I will plug that channel. If you want to... I saw something there, but it was probably just a bird. You know, if you want to get that footage to me via Dropbox or something, if you render it down to MP4, you know, then uh, we can add it into an episode of Urban Agogi, which I th I'm sure people would love. We'd absolutely love to see other people's woodland wonders and other people's impressions of kit. That would be great. So yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hope for big things. I like, I like community work. I like it when there's a whole bunch of people encouraging each other. That's great. So that's that. That's where we are at the moment. Yesterday I had a bit of a retail day, as I said. Bought records. And uh, because of a rather interesting tax break, which is probably the result of a story that I still have not yet got to the conclusion of in my life. So I want to tell you the whole story in one go. Um, I uh, had to register my address with the um, against my national insurance number, which I hadn't done, hadn't realised I hadn't done. So what's happened is I got a tax rebate because they've been taxing me too much. And then because I was a bit more organised and got all logged in and didn't procrastinate, there was another tax rebate from last year. So got a little better than a, a little less than a thousand thousand dollars. And uh, yeah, so that was cool. So I decided to order a 3D printer, but I did some research. Now you can get a 3D printer kit for about 80 pounds, about hundred dollars these days for a reasonably good 3D printer. I've seen the results, but it is one of those ones you have to dick around with. So I would like to buy one of those, the very cheapest 3D printer at some point in the future, but given that I had a little bit more money to spare, I, in real terms, I spent another 40 pounds or another $50 on a pre-assembled 3D printer. So I did not want to fail at 3D printing just because I had put together quite a complicated kit incorrectly. I wanted to explore 3D printing as a, can it be useful piece of technology? And I'm sure it can. So I decided to spend the, uh, so the 3D printer that I ended up buying was 140 pounds or just under. And for some reason I got a discount on eBay and I've no idea why. So came in at 140 pounds, including delivery. So $160 thereabouts. Um, the other one was about $100. But the one that I bought comes with a full, nearly a full kilo of filament, which means you can, you've got plenty of material to mess up your first 3D prints with, because I know that they'll possibly go out wrong. <coughs> so that's uh, essentially, the other printer would be, I don't know, $115 if you added in a spool of cheap filament. It's about £10 a kilo or $12 a kilo for the cheap stuff. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> so in real terms, it was an extra 30 or 40 quid. But for the fact that I don't have to worry about whether I put it together properly, really, and I don't have to worry about the sitting there and looking at four or five hours of assembling the thing, maybe longer, considering I don't know what I'm doing. So I figured it was worthwhile to literally get to the technology first, have a play with it, give you a real time video of what's actually been done. And uh, then we'll see. So the 3D printer is on its way, should be here by early next week. So that's the reason I went for a slightly more expensive 3D printer. But I figure a day of my time is worth more than 40 quid or $50. Especially if I'm filming it as well. 
you know, it's not just me in isolation doing it. I'm doing it largely because I want to uh, share it from a noob perspective, given that if you're doing 3D printing as a YouTube channel, you've been doing it for ages. So yeah. Um, also bought a case and power supply for my, my rebuilt video editing desktop machine. So yeah, so that's gonna be a little while in the, in the making. So yeah, so yesterday, given that I spent a couple of hours in the woods with Miles and then due to rush hour traffic, Miles basically was at mine till seven o'clock in the evening and I was just exhausted. I'd been out of the house and doing stuff largely. Oh. Right, and that's why you have spare batteries, so you can do stuff like that when you run out. So yeah, there was a break there because I was having an interesting conversation with somebody that I was walking along the river, which is great. It's always fun. Uh, you do find people are friendlier when they're out walking in the woods. So yes. Yes. So yes, yeah, so the slightly more advanced 3D printer is on its way. It wasn't much of a bump considering. It's a slightly smaller print area though. But I don't see that as being a ma massive problem. And I had a, a little tinker around with Cora, which is the uh, 3D printing slicing software. So for the first few um, sort of um, days or weeks of tinkering around with 3D printing, I don't intend to design anything with CAD. I'm just going to go to Thingverse and see how things print out until I've got a handle on it. Well, that really is seizing the means of production. I mean, there's, once you get to there and you sort of think, right, well, how, how interesting is owning, say, a laser cutter going to be? You know, how interesting is having some kind of CNC mill you know, if we can get to the point where we've got desktop milling machines. Now, this was quite an adventurous decision. <coughs> yeah, you can never see gradients. That was like 45 degrees of mud. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. So yesterday was a very busy day and by the time seven or eight o'clock rolled around. I wasn't fit for very much. But I did get a lot of exercise. So. So I didn't get to do those exercises because at about eight o'clock in the morning, I was up and at my computer after checking to see whether that tax rebate had come through. And when it had, I uh, saw that there was a, a slightly better ready assembled 3D printer, which was, uh, I couldn't believe how cheap it was. There are cheaper 3D printers and I do intend to get a, uh, a self-assembly one, one of the 80 quid Prusa A8s or Anet A8s, that sort of thing, or a Tronxy just to see how complicated they are to put together. But I don't want that to be the barrier to 3D printing. So maybe in a couple of months after I've got used to it, if I'm still using the 3D printer a lot, um, then I'll fold that into getting a second one. Because I don't, you know, if you're using micro SD cards to put the information and the files on the printer, then uh, having two is not gonna be necessarily the worst thing in the world. So yeah, so that's the plan. And uh, yeah, that will probably be going in the studio as I renovate the studio and get it looking cool. <sighs> so as a result of all that and not really stopping, because as soon as I got back from Manchester record shopping and hanging out with Andrew and doing a few other bits, I literally had about half an hour at home before Miles showed up and we went for our long walk in the woods. 
So that was pretty cool. It was a very good day. I didn't do the exercises. I'm not going to do them again today. I've got to sort myself out, get yesterday's video edited and rendered, and get today's video edited and rendered. So in all likelihood, you'll get yesterday's video sometime later this morning, and today's video will be late tonight, my end. So depending on where you are in the world, that'll be how you get it. So, that's going to be about it. So as always, thanks for watching and do take care.